Quote, Wednesday, August 5th, 1942. After a sad farewell to our parents and relatives, we leave for the central train station at 5.30 a.m. We are carrying heavy bags. At the station, we and over 300 other Jews are led to the railway platform, guarded by German policemen who first confiscated all our documents. At the platform, we are forced into a special train which leaves a little bit later. Our family members who have dared to enter the train station wave at us. Despite the early hour, fellow Jews have climbed onto the rooftops of the buildings alongside the railway tracks. They wave too. The destination of our train is unknown to us, but the spirit amongst the men in the train is positive. The train passes Mechelen, then Ghent. We stop in Kortrijk for an hour. In every train station we pass through, we throw postcards out of the windows. The cards are being picked up by bystanders." End of quote. This is the first entry from the journal of Moses or Maurice Sant. He is the man in the photo, and the picture that you see of the train station is the Antwerp Central train station around 1935. So it does not differ much from the train station that Maurice describes in this entry in his diary. It is a clandestine diary that Maurice kept during his um, forced labor for Organisation Tot in the north of France. In what context did he perform this forced labor? As mentioned uh, by Annelies, between June 13 and September 12, 1942, over 2,250 men, Jewish men, are claimed for forced labor by the German construction company Organisation Tot. They are taken from mainly Antwerp. We think six trains left from the Antwerp train station, such as the train in which Maurice was deported. But also one train from Brussels, one train from uh, Liège, and one train from Charleroi. You can see here the routes that the uh, nine trains took. One of them went to Les Masures in the French Ardennes, where the 288 men on this specific train were put to work to uh, fabricate charcoal. The other eight trains were sent to the coast to build parts of the Atlantic Wall. They built bunkers, they built um, roads, they built fortifications. But the camps in which they were housed, about uh, a dozen different camps, the circumstances there were horrendous. These men were subject to um, very bad working conditions. They were treated by the guards like animals. One of the bystanders in a, of a village near one of the camps states that the Jews there were treated even worse than animals. So you can see, uh, together with the malnutrition and the uh, horrific uh, living conditions, the situation in these camps does ring a bell when thinking of Auschwitz and other camps. It is a prelude of these um, camps, as also uh, described in the work of the researcher Rudy Rigaud. These men are taken to the north of France and are kept there under horrific circumstances, but they can't stay in contact with their families back home. Correspondence is possible. We see here a photo of, on the left, the Jewish prisoner, Vital Bertrand Lieberman, and on the right, Lieutenant de Döring, who led the Le Masure camp in the French Ardennes. This is a postcard he was able to send home from the camps. We have other examples, we have letters, we have postcards, we have at least uh, two other journals apart from that of <coughs> Moses Sand where this communication is uh, mentioned. Why this is important, I shall elaborate on this uh, a little bit later. So the men were taken by train to the camps and were held there uh, until different points later on in 1942. We have done some research on the men from this group of 2,250 who were from Antwerp. We took this specific group because it was the largest group and because we wanted to see if the survival chances of the families of these men that were taken were higher, lower or equal to the other uh, Jews in Antwerp. In other words, did this forced labor have an impact on the fate of the Jewish community in Antwerp? And as you can see from our research results, it definitely did. 
the standard number for deportation from Belgium is that 45% of the Jewish community of Belgium was deported. We were also able to calculate, uh, together with Verde van den Dalen and Laurent Schram, who already took uh, uh, gave her speech, that about 56% of all Jewish persons registered in Antwerp in 1940 were deported. So the number for Antwerp is much higher. And this can be explained by both these uh, men taken to northern France and their families, because we checked the fate of the families of these men from Antwerp, and their deportation rate is almost 74%, which is even much higher than the 56% of Antwerp. So you can see the, the very hard impact that uh, the Organisation Tot Forced Labour has on the Jewish community in Antwerp. This research is still ongoing and we will continue our research by investigating further into other aspects that can explain why Antwerp was hit, hit so much harder than the, um, than the, the other uh, bigger communities in uh, Belgium. <coughs> so why is the rate of deported family members of Organisation Tot workers much higher? At the moment we are considering two possible explanations, one I already mentioned. It is the correspondence between the men and the families. I showed you the picture of Vital uh, Lieberman, and this is actually the back of the picture. So it states that the photo was taken at Le Masur on the 12th of July 1943, and he addresses it to his darling cousins, uh, Rosa and uh, Anna. So we can see that this correspondence is, um, and we see this also in the number, is keeping the families of the men at their legal address because they want to remain in contact. We see that the correspondence is directed towards their official address and the women and the children left behind in Antwerp want, don't want to miss any news about their loved ones in northern France. A second aspect, and this is much more debated, is uh, the small payments that we were made by Organisation Tot at some point via the Jewish Council to some of the families. So this financial need of having the husband or the head of the household in northern France leaving women and children unattended without any income has kept them fixed at their legal address because they depend on this even so small amount of money to be able to survive. Here you can see maybe a picture that most of you know. On the right is the uh, inner courtyard of the Dossin barracks in 1942. On the left is the station in Dixmuyde. I chose these two pictures because they symbolize the fate of most, uh, most of these Antwerp Jewish men that were taken by Organisation Tot to northern France. Most of them were taken, uh, were deported directly from France. Most of them, over 1,300 of them, were registered in northern France and were deported directly from there after a short stop in the Dossier, at the Dossier barracks to Auschwitz-Birkenau. Many escapes, around 200 escaped from this train, um, but most of those who did not escape were murdered in Auschwitz-Birkenau. So most of them uh, had a stop near the Dossier barracks or passed through uh, the Dossier barracks. There are two other groups, um, the men at Le Masur that were married to Belgian, uh, to non-Jewish women or who held Belgian nationality were deported via Drancy in France. Only one of this group survived and it was Vital Bertrand Lieberman who we saw on the uh, photos. And then there is this group and this group needs um, not much further um, research because it has been thoroughly researched. So in the camps in northern France, even after the large deportations of the 1,300 men in October 1942, uh, the men who are Belgian nationals or married to non-Jewish women, they remain in the camps. They are not on these big transports. In September 1944, they are concentrated in uh, the, re uh, the region of Dan Camier and they are deported via Boulogne. They are put on a cattle train and the train leaves, uh, it f uh, leaves Boulogne via Calais, Dunkirk, Adenkerk, it arrives in Dixmuyde where, due to a uh, collision of events, the train is halted. The train cannot continue, the locomotive, the engine, uh, in the front is claimed for another transport, which is of much more uh, military importance, and the railroad tracks near Dixmuyde have been um, attacked by the resistance, by the Armée Secrète, uh, and uh, so the train can't continue. When the guard, uh, guards unload the last 300 men from the train, which are uh, partly 
this Jewish man from Organisation Tod, the inhabitants of the Gsmuide, um, they see this man being marched off by their guards and they uh, they, they signal the men and more and more men from this group are pulled into shops, into cafes, into restaurants and that is how most of the men disappear <coughs> from the group. When the guards discover this, they decide to just leave the prisoners and they flee. And most of these 300 prisoners will thus uh, survive. Just to end with an example of uh, how heroism can have an impact on um, the fate of the deportees. Thank you.